Hebrews chapter 2. So Hebrews chapter 1 began with a bang. Ta-da! Celebration of the enthroned Christ. It starts in the middle of the story. We join Hebrews with Christ having risen from the dead and seated at the right hand of God. Well, chapter 2 kind of goes back then and gives us some of the backstory uh, behind, well, how did we get there? How did he get to heaven? And, and I love this part of, he, of Hebrews 2 because it gives us a, a, some sense of why Jesus came to earth. Why did he need to become human? We, I think he fills in some gaps. Although I don't think the author of Hebrews is Paul, uh, I think Hebrews 2 gives us some sense of the inner dynamics of some of Paul's thought even. Hebrews and Paul, I think, really um, help shed light on each other at various points. And Hebrews 2 is one of those places where I think we get a little uh, hint of Paul's theology where Hebrews fills in some blanks for us. Well, let's dive into Hebrews chapter 2. The first four verses of Hebrews 2 are the first warning of Hebrews. Hebrews is known for its warning passages, and I think you'll find another video in the Seedbed Collection on the warning passages uh, in Hebrews. Hebrews 2, 1 through 4 is the first of the warning passages. The author of Hebrews is a really skilled writer. Of course, he's inspired, that helps, um, but God takes us from where we're at, you know, when he inspires us, he, he uh, um, he, he takes us where we're at and moves us, moves us along. The author of Hebrews, uh, to start off with, I think fairly obviously had some very, very deep rhetorical skills and, and training. Um, I'm not going to say that Apollos wrote it, but that's the kind of person I picture uh, when I picture the kind of rhetorical skill uh, that the author of Hebrews had. And so what, what Hebrews does is, Hebrews holds our attention, or holds their attention originally, by punctuating throughout the sermon. He does a little teaching, and then bam, he'll interrupt, uh, we interrupt this sermon with this brief exhortation to remind you why this is important. Uh, which, by the way, if you are a preacher, is a good idea. Um, so he, he has this celebration of the enthroned Christ in chapter 1, and then in the first four verses of chapter 2 he says, now, if Jesus is really that important, if Jesus is really that great, then you should probably pay attention to the things he said. Because remember in the Old Testament, remember in the Old Testament when they disobeyed Moses, they got in big trouble? Well, if Jesus is greater than Moses, and they got in big trouble when they didn't listen to Moses, then you're really going to get it if you don't listen to Jesus. We're not used to thinking about the New Testament that way, but that's what Hebrews says, so I suppose we have to deal with it. Uh, he says that we're going to get it even more if we don't listen to Jesus than they got it when they didn't listen to Moses. How will we escape if we neglect such a great salvation, which was first spoken by the Lord and was uh, passed on to us by those who heard Him? By the way, this verse in chapter 2, 2-2 two, two, I think it is, uh, is one of the strongest arguments against Paul being the author, um, because the author says, um, it was, uh, we, he says it was first spoken and then we heard about it from those who heard Jesus. Paul isn't one to usually say, yeah, I'm a second tier apostle, I heard about Jesus from other people. Paul really emphasizes in his letters, am I not an apostle? Have I not seen the Lord? And so it would be very unlike Paul to say that this word of salvation was confirmed by, to us by those who heard them. Usually Paul says, I heard him. Um, again, none of this is 100% proof, but the, if you wanted to know why uh, most scholars don't think Paul was the author, it's the style, and this verse, I think, has to feature heavy in that, that whole argument. So, after this four-verse warning, the author of Hebrews gives the inner dynamic of what's been going on in salvation. So, the problem is, humanity was created to rule in the creation. Um, we have this quotation from Psalm 8, what is humanity uh, that you pay attention to them? What is the, the, the children of, of humanity uh, that you visit them? You've crowned humanity with glory and honor and put everything under humanity's feet. At least that's the way it was supposed to be. But when we get um, to, to the next verse after this quotation, Hebrews says, but wait a minute, we don't see everything humanity under humanity's um, feet. This reminds me of Romans 3.23 where Paul says, all have sinned and are lacking the glory of God. That's the way I think that verse should be translated. We lack the glory of God. Why do we lack the glory of God? Because all have sinned. Um, and so we've fallen from the glory we were supposed to have. Hebrews clarifies what Paul might have been thinking there when it says, um, you, you crowned us with glory and honor, you put everything under our, our feet, but 
we don't see everything under humanity's feet at this time. But what we do see is the, and the order of the Greek is very interesting here, we see the having been made a little bit lower than the angels, Jesus. Jesus comes to troubleshoot the human problem. Humanity was supposed, um, if you think of it in computer terms, humanity was supposed to boot up to glory, but we have this virus, the sin virus, that keeps our, our humanity from booting up to the glory it was supposed to have. So Jesus uh, comes and logs in. He, he partakes of blood and flesh because we partake of blood and flesh, verse 14, the incarnation. But He is without sin, as Hebrews will later say. And therefore, He is able to boot up to glory, and as long as we log in under His name, um, we can also, but he came to lead many sons and daughters to glory. That's why he came. That's why he took on flesh and blood, um, so that he could solve the human problem. And then Hebrews has this statement, it's, God didn't come to take on, uh, Jesus didn't come to take on angels, to save angels. He came to help us, the seed of Abraham. And even if you're not Jewish, in Christ we are the seed of Abraham. And so Jesus came to save us. He became human so that we can all go to glory. And then Hebrews 2 begins with what I think are the key verses of Hebrews. We have this high priest. This is the first place where the high priest theme is introduced. We have this high priest um, who can sympathize with our weaknesses um, and whom we can go to for help in our time of need.